The Star Trek community, you, have been there for me with notes of encouragement and inspiration, as well as advocacy and donations for research. It all makes a difference, big and small, in the fight to find a cure for this terminal illness. Please accept my gratitude and appreciation. treat I am, for the first time in public, going to do a belly shot toast with you. <laughs> you honor me. I feel your love and support, and thank you. He just likes building suspense. He's been done for like a minute. <laughs> Here is to love and hope and laughter. Cheers. The other day my son asked me, Hey Dad, what would you do if you didn't have ALS for one whole minute? Oh man. It's these kind of questions that just tug on my heartstrings. I tear up at the impact on my family and all the things I've lost. Such a profound innocent question full of hope and curiosity from my child. I looked at my son in the eyes through my tears and said, I would spend all 60 seconds with my arms wrapped around you and your sister, holding you tight again. My son pauses. He looks at me and says, If I was you, I would eat a slice of pizza. <laughs> 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 After you get diagnosed with a terminal illness, your perspectives shift. Little things have much deeper meaning. You learn to laugh at the absurd. An example is when I got my motorized wheelchair for the first time. Though I mourned the loss of my ability to walk, I was grateful to have the opportunity to be independently mobile again. It was near Christmas and I still needed to get my mother and my wife another Christmas gift. Sir. So I ventured out solo for the first time to a few shops in my hood. I ended up at the local Banana Republic and bought two lovely heavy wool coats. The sales lady put them on hangers and then wrapped them in those clingy clear plastic bags. You know those ones you get at the dry cleaners? Mm -hmm. Then in order for me to get home, she proceeded to drape the bag across my lap. The problem is, the coats were also laid over my chair joystick. With the plastic wrap clinging tight and the weight of the coats jamming the gear to full forward throttle. <laughs> too weak to stop it. My 400 pound chair with me and two coats went flying forward at top speed into the jewelry department. Watches, bracelets, necklaces, earrings scatter everywhere. It was a disastrous mess and I loved every second of it. You just have to laugh at this stuff.
afterwards. I would like to give a... I also want to extend a loving thank you from my family, especially my wife Susan and my two beautiful children, Lila who is 14 and my son Callum who is 9. They were incredibly touched when they heard about this special charity event. As many of you know, the effects of living with ALS ripple to the family, friends and caregivers. It's an enormous physical, mental and emotional challenge to bear. Thank God for the strength of my community, especially my wife. Full-time caregiver, full-time mother, full-time employee and full-time beautiful rock warrior. That's right, don't mess with her. I will tell you a funny story. After the initial grief of the diagnosis, my wife kicked into another gear of pragmatically getting shit done. No more messing with her den. I love her for it. Recently, we went to the pharmacy in our new accessible van and parked in the last available accessible parking spot by the entrance. I will preface this by saying my wife always puts the accessible placard on the rear view mirror after I am all settled, but we are clearly in an accessible minivan. So my wife gets out to unload me but right before she opens the side sliding door, Another lady comes up to my able-bodied wife and says, You can't park here. This is for handicapped people that need it. Now, my wife is kind, but she has been through a lot and has had a long day. As you can imagine, her immediate reaction was somewhere between complete utter disbelief and wrath of Khan. <laughs> she held her composure and simply raised her pointer finger, slowly turned around and pushed the button. Now, this is where marital teamwork comes into play. With the push of the button, the side door slides open and the ramp automatically slams down right in front of the other lady, revealing me in all my ALS glory. I drooled down my face for the extra effect. <laughs> Ready for my close-up. With a beautiful deadpan delivery, my wife, Susan, says, Is this handicapped enough for you? <laughs> what is more awesome is that the lady had the nerve to double down. She says, Well, you should have a sign. Now, this is that second gear I'm talking about with my wife. She immediately turns into the van, gets the plaque, puts it on the mirror says to the lady, you're right. I am so sorry. Then my wife reaches over to my communication device, scrolls down and pushes this button. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Enjoy your lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for coming. Uh, a lot of you have been asking us a lot about our gear, and yes. I know that this it sounds like the shop sold out quite quickly. Um, we're going to walk around in a minute and hand out uh, the flyer from our party, which did anyone have fun at that? Uh, This will be using my deep fake technology of my voice that I established before I lost the ability to speak. The funny thing is, they established my synthetic voice through a web of algorithms after I read for them 10 minutes from the script, Back to the Future. <laughs> As another treat, for the first time, I would like to read the foreword I wrote for the new Star Trek book. It is my love letter to you. Thank you. Let me tell you a story. And I will start at the end. It was mid-morning during a weekday in early November 2020. I had just awoken when Jeff, my caregiver and friend, came into my room and told me that there was a package at the front door. I asked him, what is the package? He responded, it's huge. So I repeated, what is it? A slight grin came across his face as he replied, you'll see. Then, just as he started to turn away, he shouted over his shoulder, I'll bring it around to the back. 
I lay in my bed with anticipation, staring out the back door waiting. The moment Jeff entered the backyard with the package, a grand smile filled my face as I knew exactly what it was and whom it was from. It was a giant tree with a burlap root ball, 10 feet high. But it wasn't just any tree. It was a tree from William Shatner. Two weeks prior to this moment, Mr. Shatner had reached out and asked if I wanted to have a chat with him over Zoom. It's not every day the captain makes such a generous offer, so I happily accepted. I had only had brief interactions with Bill before this, so I was very excited and curious about how our conversation would unfold. I imagined that we would talk about the current movies and TV shows that we each love, his charity, or perhaps delve into some Star Trek lore. However, it turned out to be so much more than expected. In fact, it ended up being one of the most meaningful and powerful conversations I have ever had. He was very curious about my upbringing in Canada, which we both have in common. He wanted to hear about my time at summer camp in northern Ontario and my studies in landscape architecture at the University of Guelph. We spoke about our shared love of nature and the connection we all share. The conversation led to his curiosity of my recent illness with ALS. I opened up to him, which flowed into a deep discussion about our personal mortality and what happens to us after we die. We were both very open and vulnerable, and it turned out that we share a similar philosophy about our transcendence into nature. I don't want to divulge all of the details, but I will let you know what he wrote on the card accompanying the package. Dear Kenneth, maybe you want to be a tree too. Thank you very much. Very fondly, Bill. This tree, which now stands tall in my backyard, is more than just a beautiful memory of our conversation and shared love of nature. For me, the tree became a symbol of how gracious and special our Star Trek family is. I realized we are to people, with 800 episodes of Star Trek between us. Yet here we are, connected and curious about each other. That is the beauty of Star Trek. Of course, it all begins with the writing, the characters, and their relationships displaying powerful themes of love, hope, discovery, inclusion, courage, curiosity, exploration, honor, sacrifice, service, diplomacy, trust, and science. However, I believe the essence of Star Trek goes beyond the material and transcends into our lives. This is the greatest gift that Star Trek gives us, how we connect with one another outside of the show. I am incredibly grateful for the friendships from my colleagues and the fans. I could tell you a magical story about each and every one of my castmates and alumni, or relate dozens of special interactions I've shared with the fans. We are a family, and I take great comfort in this unique phenomenon. In dealing with my mortality, I feel comforted knowing that the characters I brought to life will live on. I'm blessed to have learned from them, the good and bad, and I'm proud of what they might offer others for years to come. However, the most precious benefit of being a part of Star Trek is the experience making it and all the people I have met along the way. The fabric of the Star Trek family is the true gift. Aside from sharing in characters, stories, and adventure, the common thread is each other. The special connection we have. This gives me the ultimate solace along my journey, the friendships and connections forged. Nobody's memories will live on along with the characters. Thank you for this gift. And who knows, maybe some of you will one day breathe the oxygen from my leaves or lean on my trunk which stands tall on the grounds of the new Starfleet Academy. Beside the ginkgo, there will be a plaque that reads my favorite quote from Gene Roddenberry. In a very real sense, we are all aliens on a strange planet. We spend most of our lives reaching out and trying to communicate. If during our whole lifetime, we could reach out and communicate with just a people, we are indeed very fortunate. It's a limited edition um, of 25. It's a black and white print on paper frame. Uh, a collaboration with Ethan Peck from Discovery. Uh, this print is signed by Ken Mitchell. 
So the photo was taken on set of Star Trek Discovery Season 2. The prosthetics team would collect Spock ears after each use on a pin board throughout the season. The image reminded me of a collection of butterflies or fortune cookies. The Vulcan salute of live long and prosper has become an important mantra during my battle with ALS. So um, Ken has uh, graciously wanted to offer this as a raffle prize today. Ooh. And we are going to be coming around in a minute. And if you if you would like, we are going to be selling raffle tickets. Uh, all proceeds of the sale of the raffle tickets will be going directly to ALS Research. We're going to do raffle tickets at $100 a ticket. Okay. The value of the print is, uh, is uh, almost $1,100 uh, frame. So um, Cindy, everyone knows Cindy? Say hi, Cindy. Hi. Cindy's going to come around with um, raffle tickets. And if you'd like to purchase one, just raise your hand. If you have uh, cash, great. If you would like to do Venmo, we have an area over here where we've got a Venmo option for you. If you would like to do an IOU, we can also do that and we can chat to you about how to follow up on that um, at a later time. You can buy as many tickets as you like. And once again, um, this is all going to support ALS research. So thanks for your support. Um, we're gonna try to do this as quickly as possible and hopefully we'll do a draw uh, before we all leave and we'll find out who takes this print. Sound good? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, so if you'd like that ticket, so just raise your hand so you can start. Back. Thanks right. for everything. Thank you for coming. I'm needed at another event. Thank you. I left you my fart. <laughs>